Joining Bits and Bytes Live today, I'm Debbie Bradshaw from the Telco and Edge Business Unit at VMware, and this is actually my very first Bits and Bytes Live. So uh, I do hope that they ask me back, that I don't blow it, but um, I'm really thrilled to be here today. In case it's your first time listening to the Bits and Bytes Live, just let me share with you that this live program is actually an extension of our Telco Cloud blog. That Telco Cloud blog lives on VMware.com. And between these two mediums, what we're trying to do is really bring tech and innovation to our communication service provider customers who are in the middle of a digital transformation. I'm thrilled to be here today. And what we're talking about is the power of community. We're going to be talking about the 5G ecosystem. And we're going to share a real life uh, use case around the agriculture industry. Um, but the real rock stars today and the people who really deserve the credit are Kurt Steck, who's the managing general partner of the 5G Open Innovation Lab, and Jim Brismitsis, who's also the founder and general manager of the 5G Open Innovation Lab. Thank you guys for joining. We're Thanks really, for having us. Yeah. Thanks, yeah, thrilled to be here. Without further ado, Jim, why don't you take and explain what is the 5G Open Innovation Lab for everybody and your vision for this lab when you started. You bet. And thanks again, Debbie, for inviting us to today's uh, episode. So the 5G Open Innovation Lab is an applied innovation program. We looked at 5G more than just the connectivity and all the great stuff that is, is planned. We looked at it as an extension of the edge as well. And we looked at that in the context of where enterprise and, and digital transformation is going. There's a world there that could really be tapped into with innovative startups that are creating use cases and technologies that would really live out in the edge. In addition to that, we think of it as a great opportunity for carriers to also evolve as well and to be part of what we see as being a pretty large and broad opportunity from an edge perspective. What was missing though was that developer journey. If I'm an enterprise startup who's building new capabilities that wants to tap into what's promised in connectivity with 5G, but also look at how does my app model and the value that I can create as local experiences on the edge, how does it all come together that was missing? And so together with VMware and T-Mobile and Intel and Microsoft and other partners, uh, we founded this lab back in uh, 2019, started our first program in 2020. And today we'll get to talk to you about some innovative things we're doing on taking a lot of that um, uh, uh, innovation and actually putting inside the context of, of living labs, a field lab, as we've called it. I'll let Kurt talk more about that. Let's talk, actually, you know, what we're going to do is we're, let's go ahead and play the video so people can hear from the actual growers themselves and discuss this real life use case that's happening with the field labs. Go ahead and shoot and play the video. To be a farmer and make it, you got to be innovative in order to survive in this industry. You're very dependent on the weather. You're very dependent on what Mother Nature wants to bring you. They kind of said, if you dream it, we can make it happen. So I'm like, well, I got all kinds of dreams. So let's, let's see what we can do. If we lose these farms, we lose our food security. Every time a piece of land goes out of production, it's heartbreaking because we can never replace that land. That land becomes a subdivision. It becomes a strip mall. And to keep these farms here, they have to be economically viable. The commercial side of rural America doesn't have that access to the data and the applications and the infrastructure that can help them become a lot more efficient. The stuff we take for granted is not something that these farmers get to enjoy because in many cases, they're just precluded from access to the internet. What we hope to do here is democratize that technology for farmers. Getting to a point where they can use data to inform a more efficient approach 
will enable them to be more competitive and ultimately enable them to set up the farm so that they can pass it on to the next generation. Technology can be really exciting, but it's only as valuable as the outcomes, right, that we can help drive for the communities that are leveraging this technology. Whether it's a small boutique farm, or it's a large commercial farm, or somewhere in between. This project provides the information that they need to be economically viable. So the vision behind what we're doing here is to try to bring together entrepreneurs, industry partners, public and private institutions, and really bring the expertise to solve real world problems. One of the things that we have to do as part of that is to bring growers and farmers who actually are living this every day and have the real problems and start working with technology companies so that you can build solutions that are actually meaningful and will deliver value. In order for the American farmer to survive, we have to improve our efficiencies in our operations. We have to figure out a way to produce more food on less acres. Nature is complex, it's dynamic, it's different every day. There is no industry comparable to farming in terms of the potential volume and effective use of data. But there's also no industry that has been further disconnected from data than farming. We're here to open the door. I know, you know, I know you guys, you really should be super proud of what you accomplished in 2020, despite a global pandemic and bringing your life. Um, Kurt, you know, one of the questions that I get asked about from our service providers when I'm not talking to them is about the use cases. It's the number one question that comes up. Um, why don't you tell us? you know, what are we doing in terms of these growers? And why don't you tell us about the data that's being processed at the edge? I would love to do that. Debbie, so number one, thank you for having me this afternoon. Glad to be here as part of what we're doing in the 5G Open Innovation Lab. One of the things that people may not understand about the Washington state ag economy is it's actually really diverse. Um, often people around the globe think of Seattle and the state of Washington as being a tech hub, and it certainly is. But we have actually one of the most diverse um, agricultural ecosystems in the world with everything from you know probably 15 to 30 um, specialty crops grown to row crops like wheat and, and apples. And so the reason that's important to understand about the state uh, ag economy is that brings up a number of different use cases that we try to address. And so and we started in Western Washington with our first field lab, focus on a couple of smaller uh, farms, but very specific growing conditions that exist in Western Washington. And we're really studying some very specific use cases associated with those growing conditions, whether that's mildew and dis um, irrigation management is very different on Western Washington, Eastern Washington, plant germination, pet risk, mildew risk. Those kinds of things are very different in Western Washington versus some of the issues that are faced in, in uh, Eastern Washington, even on the same crops. So we're trying to understand that variability through the types of uh, tests that we want to run um, and really trying to do that through um, soil sensors, wind sensors, and understanding nanoclimate and those kinds of conditions and the impact on yield and output for these crops. You know, one of the things, Kurt, that I found so interesting when I was listening to the farmers talk from um, the farmers as well as working with Washington State University and the data scientists and food scientists that are there, they were talking about how critical yield is and they were discussing that they use one terabyte of data per hour between the cameras and the sensors and looking at the apple orchards and how the buds are growing. And when you take that and try to equate that for people so that they understand it, it's like 400 hours of video streaming or what one family of four uses in a given month. So that sheer amount of data is just so incredible. And I always get the question, and maybe you guys, you know, why is it that we can't do this with 4G and, and, and Wi-Fi? You know, what is it about 5G that's, that's so important to this? Well, specific to the state of Washington, one of the challenges we have is a lot of our growing farms are actually in places that don't have very good coverage at all, let alone have enough coverage to do and support data-driven applications like you were just mentioning. So if we want to get into things like soil nutrient mapping and then drone imaging and visualization of those crops and how that's going to impact yield, um, that's great. It's easy to do some things with soil sensors because the amount of data flowing over those networks is not very heavy. But you start getting into some of these data-driven applications 
connections. And because the network connectivity has not been strong enough, and even when you do have wireless connectivity in those places, it's not architect in a way that supports that kind of high bandwidth upload that will support those kinds of applications that enrich the farmers and growers with data that actually drives their decision making. And so part of what we're trying to go do is how do we marry up rich connectivity with strong compute capabilities that will actually allow these applications to be developed and deployed in ways that create value for the growers and farmers. One of the challenges we have in the industry in terms of why it's been held back from some of its digital transformation is there's no business model, right, that is delivering real value to the growers at scale, at the same time driving enough network volume and traffic that leads to the operators extending their networks out there and building those networks out. So we have a bit of a cart and horse, you know, chicken and the egg type of problem. And so part of the reason that we've established these labs is to establish that value creation on both sides of that equation. So that's why we brought in the farmers together with the network providers together with some of the technology providers to try to prove those business cases out by developing the types of applications that are going to create a business model that everyone can get behind that will drive that transformation in the industry. Yeah. You know, you started this, you actually have this field lab in production right now that in, and it was launched in February. But the beauty of it is what I kind of call the breadcrumbing effect, which is this when you launched that specific lab, it has led into innovation and ideologies and um, applications in all uh, all sorts of other agriculture venues. Why don't you talk to us a little bit about that? I know that this is not just going from apple orchards now. It's, it's really growing to a different whole uh, ecosystem. Yeah, one of the things that we're looking to do is, you know, how do we take that model of bring growers, technology companies, network operators together in a broader way around a broader set of crops to even drive that transformation further? And we call this phase two of our ag innovation zone across the state where we're trying to address a broader set of crops. And so we're moving into some critical, I'll say commercial crops in the state, um, those being hops for beer um, that people are very familiar with, uh, wine grapes, uh, looking at um, uh, apples, which is a huge crop in the state of Washington, cherries, pears, a lot of those what they call specialty crops. And so you know, they have some very specific growing needs. They're quite complicated in terms of everything from growing to pruning um, to the overall process of, of manufacturing and distribution. And so we're looking at extending our use cases by extending the crops that we're going to be addressing. And part of that is in this eastern Washington area, there's not a lot of population. And so the network coverage over there hasn't been driven out as far. And so the, that eastern Washington area is actually really suffers from a lack of connectivity. So we're going to extend our work in a phase two into Eastern Washington, try to bring connectivity out and drive that experimentation and really try to bring the community together. And Jim and I really believe that community driven innovation is lasting because it proves value on all sides for all parties involved. Most definitely, yeah. Um, so one of the next things, you know, that's so important, you show all of the companies that are involved, it's, it's everybody, it's high tech, it's startups, it's, um, you know, it's this, it's colleges and it's the universities come bringing this together. And Jim, when you started and founded the lab, did you think you could get all of these companies working together cohesively, um, you know, to, to bring value to this, to, to innovate in this area? Um, it, so truthfully, uh, we, I had an ambition, we had an ambition around just exploring what it means to, you know, to create applications that really could extrapolate value out of 5G networks, again, both in the connectivity side and the edge side. And we started that journey early on with our partnerships at T-Mobile and Intel and, and NASA, actually. Um, what we saw was that there was a real need and, and we can go on for days around digital transformation and all that fun stuff. But we, we really looked at, hey, there's a lot of hype on 5G what does it really mean to a developer and how can he or she really extrapolate value from that the new experiences that are aligned to commercial scenarios and we have this saying inside the lab the curtain i use quite a bit called the three-legged stool how do you create a program that aligns innovation from startups to platform capabilities such as vmwares and microsoft's and dell's and others and 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 then put in the context of of a real commercial setting so well, well, Kurt is really focused through the field labs on on harnessing a lot of that in in uh, in production, commercially viable use cases. I get really excited about the field labs because 
that gets us out of demystifying some of the what ifs, what I call PowerPoint innovation, and actually putting this innovation in the hands of, in our cases today, growers who could experiment with it, learn with it, and ultimately help us determine what are real use cases and innovation versus not real cases and innovation. So from that standpoint, I'm really excited about that. And that wasn't something that I had seen starting off the lab back in uh, late 2018, early 2019 to where we are today. So everything since then has been a, a real blessing. I think um, speaks to a lot of the pent up interest in this area. Yeah. Hey, Jim, just to make another point on that, um, one of the things I think is really interesting, I'm going to borrow a tagline from one of the growers we've been working with in eastern Washington, and I could tell you story after story about what I'll call the divide between technology companies and this growing community. Um, and I've heard numbers of stories where they just disconnect, they're not listening to one another, not understanding each other's needs or each other's motivations. And one of our growers talks about um, the best fertilizer, right, for their crops is footprints in the actual field, right? And so one of the things I'm trying to get across to the partners in the technology community that we work with is that the only way you're going to understand their problems and build solutions that are going to deliver value to growers is go spend time with them, get out in their fields, understand their problems. And so part of the work we're trying to do through the field labs is to take the, the core model we put together. And as Jim talked about very early on, is get to this idea of applied innovation. Well, applied innovation has got to solve real problems. And if you don't sit and work with the growers and understand what their problems are, you're going to build solutions that miss the mark. Right. So part of what we're doing is to try to get a little bit closer to the, you know, to the mark by bringing everyone together and working on use cases that are actually defined by the growers, not by someone who's building a PowerPoint or someone who's done some research. This is directly out of the mouth and in partnership with the growers. And we think by doing that, we can deliver value that really scales. Right. And we'll actually have commercialized momentum. Yeah. And, um, we started off with with agriculture, but. We envision and, and are in conversations with other partners here in the state of Washington and abroad about similar constructs in, uh, in other industries, whether it's in logistics or manufacturing and, and, and others. So that's what's really cool. I, I think of the field labs as the place where great innovation paired to great platform capabilities that each of our partners brings to the table uh, down to you know actually applying it in the real the commercial sense and validating what are real use cases and innovation that creates value versus great experiments. But, you know, hey, we learned more than we actually gained from it. And, and that's what's exciting yeah. for us. Absolutely. Yes. So um, so you will be moving just to to make it clear, you will, will be moving into other vertical you, you know, use cases. So in sure. manufacturing oil or um, in other other venues, this is just yeah. the start for the lab. That's that's certainly our aspiration. I don't want to. I, I would not want to mislead anybody. But we have, since the launch of our current field labs, have now sourced interest in mining and logistics, um, and manufacturing, and some other healthcare is another big one um, that we're exploring. Uh, as Kurt and I have agreed, and we're old-time Microsofters, the, the, we've hit something here that's really, really interesting. But in the spirit of of our experiences from Microsoft, let's continue understanding this space better, really refining our approach before we go and expand into other areas. And that's yeah. that's what we're using our initial field labs and ag to go do. That's yeah. wonderful. Yeah, <laughs> the really nice thing is there's been really good response. Ever since that video went out and people started to see what we're doing, people are very curious about the actual model, right? They like this idea of driving applied innovation, building a digital, I'll say, innovation community together, bringing all those parties together. And that's a model that actually will stratify across different types of industries because it really can then focus in on the same types of, I'll say, not the exact use cases, but similar use cases. So there's certainly learning that we can start to extrapolate from what we're doing and start to transfer that into other areas. But maybe most importantly, it's the model of how to drive that innovation that people are really interested in terms of trying to actually scale it out. If there's um if there's a startup that might be interested in learning more about how they can join the lab or a company that wants more information or even just individuals, where should they go, Jim and Kurt, to get more information? Certainly, they can go to the 5G Open Innovation Lab site at 5goilab.com. We have an application link directly on that if they're interested in future batches. We're actually uh, days away from announcing our third batch. This batch, like the other two batches we've had, is, is, is positioned well to be a breakout uh, batch. We're really excited about the teams that we have a chance to work with. Uh, beyond that, um, please reach out. You can reach out to myself or Kurt over LinkedIn. We'd love to hear from new folks. What we're finding is that what we're hitting on here has 
ramifications, as Kurt rightly pointed out, into other industries. And for that, you know, we'd love to hear from other groups and how this could all work together. The one thing I, I wanted to touch on of the 32 companies that we've worked with, uh, we've had a chance to really uh, engage with companies in the early parts of their journey. These are seed level companies. We've also had a chance to engage with companies like Unu and Tactile and others who are a little further in their journey, have raised north of $10 million, worth of $25 million. Um, that's really exciting for us because for our partners like VMware, they get a chance to see some really early promising technology backed by some interesting teams, but also work alongside companies a lot more established, have long past hit their product market fit and earn that hockey, hockey stick of growth. Yeah. The last thing I will say, and we didn't touch on this earlier, is our field labs are really uh, 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 a holistic engagement, not just of us, but of every one of our partners, whether it's T-Mobile or Intel or Microsoft or VMware or Dell or, or F5 Networks or Amdocs, everyone has contributed technology to those labs. And that's really important for us because we think in the context, we know in the context of enterprise, there isn't a homogenized enterprise IT strategy. It's very heterogeneous. There's a lot of different components in there. And we wanted to recreate that in our field labs. And that's what we've done uh, through that architecture, all of which you can read about online. Jim, any last words that you want to just talk in terms of what you've learned in this last, this this huge experience of yours? Yeah, certainly. Um, and I, I think I speak for Kurt and I when I share this. 5G is, is, is bigger than connectivity. There is an edge component to 5G that uh, we have yet to discover. And as, as we wrote in a proposal out to the NTIA last week, for a, a, a future 5G challenge put on by the Department of Defense. The, the plumbing, the infrastructure side of where 5G is going is, is interesting and it's exciting and there are things are happening there. But as we've known from our time at Microsoft, the, the value that gets created on top of the plumbing comes from applications. And that's our thesis in the lab. Absolutely. Hunt for the application. The, fo the folks who are building unique applications that will transform industries. We also have a number of uh, infrastructure companies are transforming millimeter wave and all these other areas, but really bring that ecosystem together. That is going to create what we see as a much bigger opportunity for 5G that includes connectivity, but also uh, the computing on the edge piece as well. And that's that. those are the areas that we're exploring. Kurt, any last words from your standpoint? I, I would say, Jim, just to further that point a little bit, just, there's a lot of programs that focus in on the supply side, right? You say that vendor infrastructure side of what's happening in the 5G space, which is really exciting in itself. We think we're one of the few groups that's really focusing on the demand side, right? Creating those applications that are going to take advantage of those platforms, of those networks works that are being created by these technology companies. And so, you know, we want to be a leader in that space and really help companies that are focused in on building those applications that we think are going to grow and scale that opportunity even faster. Jim and Kurt, this opportunity is so exciting. And I can't thank you enough for joining our Bits and Bytes Live program today. We really at VMware value and, and we focus on using tech for good and um, really pushing innovation in tech for good. So this is a perfect example of doing that. And I can't thank you enough for joining us. So look forward to uh, further discussions with you guys. Likewise, and thank you again for the introduction. And by the way, you did a great job for your first time doing business. <laughs> and VMware future. has been a fantastic partner to us and we really appreciate that. Thank you Thanks, all. Thanks, you guys. Cheers. Bye.